can't get that sucker to come off. What the hell? What'd you do with it? Good spot. Put it there. Come on. Come on, get with the program. Okay. So you're wondering what we're doing? Is that what you're up to? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I am too. Uh, here's what I've got. I've got a different gizmo here. And when I say different, I mean totally freaking different. That thing is, uh, it's not totally different, but it's different. It's built heavier than what the other one was. This is a ratchet clutch. As you can see, I've welded this. See, I welded that up. And it hasn't broken yet, but it's definitely not quite the same. And the problem that I'm going to have with this, you better get that out of the way. There's a couple of issues that I have. All right, here's something. That's a spring. Uh, this is a grease fitting. This is another grease fitting. Why is These it laying? are the guts of a grease fitting. Why is it laying in there? Hold on, I'll tell you. This oh, is. You dropped one. I heard it. This is a button. You think I dropped something? Mm -hmm, I heard it. Did it hit the ground? Yeah. Okay, well, we don't need it. Because you know what? We just don't need it. And I don't care anymore. This is my life. Alright, so. Here's a stupid thing about this. And when I say stupid, I mean it. It's stupid. I actually have to... I don't even know how I'm going to do this, to be quite honest with you. But... This unit has to come out. And in order to get that unit out... I need room, and that's one thing that I just do not have the luxury of, and that is room. You see, it comes within it comes within a nano ounce of space, if there's such a word or term or whatever, and then it won't go. It won't go anymore. So I'm kind of screwed on that. Uh, If I run it up the other way, like this, like that, I don't have room the other way to go. Because that's all the way up, and I've got this shaft here, which isn't where I need it. And this shaft just lays there on the bottom, you know. There's no button on that one, so it just kind of slides over the top. I can almost guarantee I can pull the whole thing up. Um, So yeah, I got a mess. Let me get my rag. I'm probably gonna have to pop that thing apart. And I guarantee if I cut the end of it, Oh, this thing just wants to be total cocksucker, that's all. Okay. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kinda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got it? No. Hey. Until I want to take that piece of shit out. Hey, Gilles! Hey, Gilles! Hey, Gilles! Huh. Okay. Is that your camera? Yep. Hmm. Oh, the shit. Okay. So that's the, the faulty part. Alright. Let's make sure that this is okay. tear that. What are you doing that damn shaft? There it is. I really don't want to tear that thing out. You know. 
Eu acho que olha muito gato. I got this. Okay, so this is this weird power takeoff shift, Gizmo. You gotta turn the camera off and then back on so I know where to edit. Okay. So, you don't really want to put a lot of grease on this thing. And uh, because it pounds out so easily when it is spinning away, doing its thing. Um, I'm gonna use Never Seize, like right here. And the reason I'm gonna use Never Seize is because it stays a lot longer. It's got a metal, a metal base to it. And, uh, you know, aluminum. And aluminum and steel generally fight, but this has grease to it. And, it's just a better, just a better product to use than regular grease. It'll stick around, and kind of adhere and fill in all the little cracks and crevices and stuff. And what I should do is actually put a little blob up top there. Why would I do that? You ask. Do you ask? Why would you do that, Wesley? Okay. I would put a little blob up there because this is a sealed unit. In the top, you see, it's sealed and it has a cavity to it. So, if I put that grease up there, in that sealed unit, it stays up there. And as gravity works its way through, it will continually grease my, my doodad. Ow. There you go. So, you learned something today. I have taken photographs of these part numbers. So, if this thing does blow apart again at some point, I have a quick reference in my photos. So, I, instead of going back to the catalog that I can't seem to find, Oh, well, I can find it. I just couldn't find it at the time that I needed it. Uh, I can just quick reference that. So, yeah, we're good. And the header spins just so nicely. Can you believe that? The thing is, like, stuck on the stupid grease dirt. All right, so i got to make sure that that works. Now, this shaft is too long. It has four little divots in it. But really, you only use these two center ones. And in order to put this thing together properly, right, it's supposed to be like, oh, wow, what the hell? I got a burr. There's a burr right here. So this is where the, the pin was. So I'm going to have to file that. All right, shut that off while I grab this. Yeah, I don't need to explain it. Okay. All right, so here's the problem and the solution to this, to this over lengthy shaft. All right, so they just buy this shaft as a single unit for many different machines. They're supposed to lock in place, like this one here, see? It locks in place. And the problem was that because it had this extra stub, I couldn't slide the shaft down far enough just to remove it. That's why I had to beat the thing out of there. So what I've done, it's simple. I have this guy here, which I'm going to line up appropriately with the other side. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, why in the hell ain't you going in? Now let's take this off first. So I had to line that up. So what I did was I cut it off so that I could easily install this thing without any problems uh, hopefully without any problems hopefully because this one here can actually slide freely up and down the shaft so I should be pretty good there and it was supposed to be within there's always one that isn't there so thank you uh, here let's do this first I want to have it set so that I can So this goes to the top, all right, correct, yeah, this goes to the top, there it is, now, if you see what I'm getting at here, okay, and that one there, so we do this, um, I think it's this one here that I can go up higher on, I'm not going to cut two of them off, I'll tell you that, see that? So, push that button there, and get you lined up. Oh, shit. Nope. Uh, it'll line up. And then I can C 
settled it down nicely into its prospective spot. Okay, so you get to hear me talk for the next couple of minutes. Um, this shaft is uh, a little bit on the stubborn side. Uh, it, the piece of shaft that I'm wrestling with right now is like a common piece of 540 stock that Crone buys. It's nothing special. Um, and it's too damn long. So more than likely during the uh, process of... Uh, in the manufacturing process to put that shaft in there. It's quite simple before the header goes on you slide the shaft on and it's good I did not do that. What I did Was I cut the end off of the shaft. It's just like a two-inch piece. It left more than plenty of the shaft uh, in the ratchet clutch and uh, it worked out really well so now of course we're greasing I'm not waxing I'm greasing there's you know I know that things can go wrong and you know you just you just got to maintain it the proper way Teresa comes around with her little foot and starts pumping for me thank you Teresa um, that drive line is very important to get it greased properly it just is and of course when you're done greasing what do you have to do you got to fill it with bailing twine this machine holds 32, I think, 32 balls of twine. Uh, it's a dirty job to put that twine in there. Crone has not figured out what a tarp is yet. And honestly, I just haven't had time to do the fix uh, to put the uh, piece of tarp over the top of that thing. So when you lift the panel up, that the tarp would dump the dirt around the back. But no matter what I do, it's a dirty, dirty job. I mean, everybody that owns one of these balers knows that it's just a dirty job to do this. So, anyway, now you get to see me jump for joy in the rest. Hey. You gotta, I can't hear it. It doesn't go ding ding. You're good. Okay, I'm good. So, Teresa said she was going to inspect my shaft just before she shut the camera off. But actually, what she was talking about was the, the baler. The baler in the pickup is running flawlessly. I did get it to trip out once. Um, I blew the uh, the stuffer uh, the, the stuffer clutch tripped out on wet second cut, which is pretty common. And uh, it kicked right back in a second that the uh, the second that the uh, stuffer clutch reengaged. It kicked right back in, so it's all good. So I'm happier now. I think I'm going to actually buy another one of those things and keep it on hand. Because when they get weak, you don't really, it's like a, it's like an addiction, you know, to like alcohol or stuff. Not that I'm addicted to alcohol, but I've been told that when you become addicted to alcohol, you can casually drink and then all of a sudden you realize, hey, wait a minute, I can't go a day without having a drink and then you're an alcoholic, you know. And that's kind of like this clutch is failure. It's, it fails on a slow, you know, it starts to get weak and then... You're wondering why you can't go the speed you were going before, and you're just too stupid to realize that the damn clutch is going bad. So the repair on this was definitely well-founded. Um, you know, of course, this year it is kicking out a lot more than it used to, like last year, because we're dealing with extreme conditions. Now, I think Crone is really rather excited to see what I throw at this baler, to be honest with you, because I'll tell you what, I don't think there's too many farmers out there to put a, put their balers through the pounding that I do. And I'm not talking a, a bad way. I'm just talking in a, in a general way that I run the baler to the full, fullest capacity. And, and I'm not overly rough on it. I'm just saying that this thing can handle whatever I throw at it. And again, that's just maintenance parts. I did buy a, I did buy an insurance policy, and the insurance policy covered the shaft uh, on the on the baler. It only cost me five hundred dollars for that shaft, and that shaft, both ends of it, five hundred nine for one. And I'm not sure what the other one was because he didn't quote me uh, the price of it. But it, if it was anything less than five hundred dollars, it would surprise me. So. Anywhere's or it's somewhere around a thousand dollar shaft for five hundred bucks. So the insurance policy that I bought was more than well worth it. So, anyways, what I'm doing here is I'm actually bailing for a neighbor friend of mine. Uh, he gives me hay uh, from time to time, and uh, we kind of 
wash each other's hands. I do his good hay for him, he gives me his garbage hay, and, uh, and that's that. As you can see in the background, they have a pumpkin picking uh, gig going on down here, which they make very well. They make good money at it, and it's, it's called Everett Farms, and uh, they just do their thing, and I think, I don't, I think I'm good with the bale in the back there. I know I am. I'm, I'm pretty good. Just fell off, so we're good to go. We're going to go on to the next place. Uh, so Everett Farms is down here in Ringo's, New Jersey, so if you're local and you're looking for a really cool maze, this is the corn maze. The corn looks gorgeous this year, by the way. So they got a nice corn maze going on here, and they have uh, pumpkin picking after the corn maze, so they're doing really well there. And I believe you can also check out this uh, railroad. You can take a train ride to the pumpkin patch, which is really pretty cool, too. I won't be driving by that, but the platform, the platform is right around the corner here, right there. You see where those green, the white trailers are and that green roof? So the Black River and Western Railroad, which goes out of Flemington, New Jersey, comes down here, drops you off, and then there's a really cool guy here. He's got a train, these train display, and the trains actually go around and around and around the circles. You got a stone tunnel there. I mean, it's really cool. Um, is that Row Electric? I think. I don't know. I don't know what his name is, but boy, what a what a neat display that is. It's like he got a hold of an erector set and made trains kind of cool. So anyways, if you're in Ringo's, New Jersey, uh, or around the area in Hunterdon County, stop by the Black River and Western Railroad, make a day of it with your kids and stuff, and uh, come out and get some pumpkins. Do a corn maze. It sounds like a lot of fun. I personally have never done this one um, legally. No, I'm just joking. I never would go steal their pumpkins, even though I thought about it, but I'm sure they would give me a pumpkin if I asked them. No, but I think it would be more fun to just go pay the money and go on through the, through the maze and get my pumpkin in the end, right? Yep. All righty, so check that out. And yes, my Chrome Baylor's back in business. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more. And if you don't subscribe, I'm going to go to your house and kick your ass personally because, because I am so close to 100,000 subscribers. I get my little silver play button, which would make me so happy. Please subscribe. I really don't want to spend all that time and money beating people up so they subscribe. And I'm just joking, so anyway, I, 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 yeah, thanks for watching. I, I humbly ask you for your subscription if you haven't done it already.